Hi everyone. Um, okay, so I thought we could start with kind of what the agenda looks like the last couple days. Uh, so we have notes on inverse functions today. You'll have homework for it. Monday was inverse functions again, and you'll get the test review. Tuesday and Wednesday are test review days, and if you get through the test review, then you'll start working on the final exam review. Thursday we test, last test of the semester, okay? And then Friday, Monday, Tuesday, you'll work on the final exam reviews. Um, I'll talk to you about course recommendations for next year and grades going into the final, okay? All right, um, let's get into this unit. So I start, I wanna start with this to kind of talk about uh, what we know so far so that we can move forward with what we're gonna um, do today. We're actually gonna go the opposite direction that we've been doing with the video. So what we know right now in the first quadrant is that here's a 30 degree, here's a 45 degree, and here's a 60 degree. So 30 degrees means that this would be pi over six and sixes and threes go together. This would be pi over four. And this would be pi over three, since this is 60 degrees and six and threes go together. Okay. This coordinate would be root three over two, one half. Whereas this coordinate is the opposite, it would be one half root three over two. This coordinate would be root two over two, root two over two. Okay. So if you think about what we've been doing so far, I've been asking you questions like sine of pi over 6 or cosine of pi over 4, something like that, or tangent of 60 degrees. Okay, I've been giving you pi over 6, pi over 4, something in degrees. Okay, and when I give you those, you've been giving me coordinates as answers. The answer is 1 half, it's root 3 over 2, it's root 2 over 2, something like that. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to go the opposite direction today. So I'm going to give you a coordinate, and you are going to tell me the angle that's associated with it. Okay. So if I tell you that your y value is 1 half, you would tell me that it happens at pi over 6. If I tell you that the x value is root 2 over 2, you are going to tell me that it happens at pi over 4. Okay. So opposite direction. Before the quiz, we were evaluating. Given this, you were finding the coordinate. Now it's given the coordinate, tell me the angle. Okay. So on the top part of your notes, it looks like this. Okay. It says re that recall in order for a function to have an inverse, it must be one to one. That's going to be important when we put a restriction on our domain. Okay. One to one means it passes a vertical line test. It means that you can't have a function that um, does this. Like this is not a function, it doesn't pass a vertical line test. Okay. So I'll explain what that means further. Um, it says, here's the idea of an inverse um, using notation. So when you're given something, like on your quiz, if you had to do sine of theta equals um, something like, uh, let's say, 10 over 12, in order to figure out what theta is, you would have put in your calculator the sine inverse of 10 over 12. We use inverse whenever we're trying to find an angle, which is theta. Right? So that's what this is saying. It's saying the sine inverse of 1 half, so the sine inverse of this coordinate 1 half, is pi over 6. Pi over 6 is an angle, so it's giving you an angle as an answer. Okay? What we did on the quiz was this. You did sine of pi over 6, which is saying where is your y, or what is your y value at 30 degrees, and that's why the answer was 1 half. Okay, we're going the opposite direction now. Okay? Um, when we are asked to find the inverse, of a trig function, we are looking for the angle that gives the corresponding ratio or point of the unit circle. So it's very important that you understand inverse means angle. Okay. Um, sometimes instead of using inverse, we use other notations. So sine inverse, cosine inverse, tangent inverse is the same thing as saying arc, sine, arc, cosine, arc, tangent. We'll use both interchangeably because you should know both notations, but they mean the same thing. They all mean inverse, inverse, inverse. Okay? Um, before we get to questions, there's a restriction on values we can choose from the unit circle. Mathematicians have decided to restrict positive and negative output values for each of the trigonomic functions as shown below. The reason they've done this is because they want to make sure it's still a function. Okay? So here's the thing. If arc cosine is x, 
it will always be defined from here to here. So you'll only look in the first and second quadrant for your answers. Okay? The reason is this. If I said I wanted to know where is your x root 2 over 2, well, there's two places that that happens. Your x is root 2 over 2 here as well as here. Okay, but if I have two outputs, I'm not going to have a function anymore because I can only have one output. Okay, and if you were to talk about the graph of function, it wouldn't pass the vertical line test. Okay, so what we do is we have to look at this part right here. So anytime we talk about cosine, we will always specifically talk about the first and the second quadrant. We want to know where this happens in one of those two quadrants. The reason is because in the first quadrant, your x's are positive, and in the second quadrant, your x's are negative. So you want a place where x is both positive and negative. Okay, here your x's are negative and here is positive, but I don't want to repeat um, the second quadrant, and I don't want to repeat the uh, first quadrant. Okay, when we talk about sine, which is our y, we are going to use the first and fourth quadrant. Okay, that's because here my y's are positive and here they're negative. Okay, if I use these two, I would get more. I would get um, more solutions, but then it wouldn't be a function. It wouldn't pass a vertical line test. Okay, so notice that this is how it's defined. Okay, that's going to play a part in our answer. So instead of saying that like this point right here is eleven pi over six, that doesn't fit into this domain. So what we'll say is that instead it's negative pi over 6. So we'll go from here forwards and backwards because of how it's defined here. Okay. Uh, for arc tangent, we use the same quadrants as the last one. We use the first and the fourth quadrant again. Okay. We do not use the other quadrants. The reason is because in this quadrant, when we talk about tangent, you're doing y over x, which would be a positive divided by a positive, which equals a positive. And here, when you do y divided by x, it would be a negative divided by a positive, which equals a negative, um, which equals a negative. So now you have where you're looking for positive and negative. So you want to always look for where your answer could be positive or negative and not double up in places. Okay? And the reason we use these two quadrants here and not the first and the second is because um, if you look at the graph of the function, which you won't do until next year, there is no value here. So notice that it, there is no equal sign here, but there was an equal sign here and here. There's no equal sign here because here is undefined and undefined. Okay, but we'll get through all those reasons. <clears throat> okay, so let's actually go through some. Okay, first things you want to look for um, are the notation. Notice it says arc sine. That's the exact same notation as this. This means that we're looking for an angle. Okay, so I'm just going to write angle question mark so that you understand we're looking for an angle. Our angles, we're never going to say 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees. We're always going to write that in terms of radians, and it's because of how the domain is defined. Okay, all, all uh, unit, we will make sure that it's always in radians. So it's always going to be 0 to pi, pi negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, but it's not going to become 0 to 90 degrees. Okay, so your answers will always be in radians. Okay, so arc sine, sine means y. Denominator 2 means you're looking at a 90 degree angle. So if I graph this, I want to know, so again, angle, right? Question mark. I want to know angle. I want to know where, um, uh, yeah, I want to know where is my y value. I want to know where is my y value for 3 over 3. So first I want to know what quadrant I'm looking at. So when I think about sine, sorry, don't do this because this is not a, a pi, it's not a reference angle. Um, sine means that I want to look in these two quadrants. Okay, if you look up above, that's where it's defined. So these two quadrants, okay, if my y value is root 3 over 2, that means it's positive, so it must be in this quadrant because here's negatives. So where is my y value root 3 over 2? Well, root 3 over 2 is a high height compared to 1 half, so it must be right here. Okay. That, in terms of radians, is pi over 3 because it's at 60 degrees. So this would be my answer. Notice I gave you a coordinate. Your answer was an angle. Instead of angle gives me a coordinate. Okay. Let me try again. Sine inverse, again, means I want to know what is the angle. Okay. And sine is talking about y. So I want to know where is my y negative 1 half. 
Well, sine means I'm talking about these two quadrants. Because my y is now negative, it must be in this quadrant. Okay? So if you think about your height of negative one-half, you have an option where this is negative one-half, this is negative root three over two, and this is our negative root two over two, and negative root three over two. So this is where we want to be. So the question is, what is that angle? Well, it's only down a little bit, so it would be at negative pi over six. Okay? Negative pi over six. I do not go all the way around and go to 11 pi over 6 because then I'd be going through quadrants we're not using. So I either go down or I go up. Okay. Um, arc cosine, again, means I want to know what is that angle. Cosine is x. So it means this is my x value. When does that happen? So at what angle do I get that x value? x values are the first two quadrants because x is positive here and negative here. So negative x values happen in this quadrant. Okay? And if you think about this, your x value, this would be negative 1 half. This would be negative root 2 over 2. And this would be negative root 3 over 2. And this would be negative 1. Because I'm going a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, and then to my furthest. So if I want to know where negative root 3 over 2 is, it must be here, which is a little distance between that. So that's pi over 6, that reference angle. Okay. So that means that at this point, I have to know where it is from here to here. So I want to know how far it is from here to here. Okay, So that coordinate is 5 pi over 6. That's the angle, 5 pi over 6. Because that's pi over 6 short of 6 pi over 6. So this would be my answer. Okay. On the back side... Um, cosine inverse, so cosine inverse again means I want to know where is x negative 1. Okay, first you want to say, well, x means I'm talking about these two uh, quadrants. Where is my x negative 1? Well, my x is negative 1 right here. And that's at y. Okay, so that would be my answer. All right, and the next one, arc tangent. So tangent's a little bit harder because it's a ratio, and I want to know then where is y over x negative 1. Okay. So first I want to say, well, tangent's talking about these two quadrants. If I divide my x and my y up here, I get a positive. Here I get a negative, so it's got to be in this quadrant. So then you think to yourself, well, where can I divide two things and get a, a 1? Well, they'd have to be the same two things in order for me to get a 1, so it must be at a 45-degree angle right here. Because then I'd be dividing negative root, two, or, uh, root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. That's my height. Okay, so then the question is, what is that angle? Well, that angle is pi over 4, but I have to go backwards to get there, so my answer would be negative pi over 4. And again, we're not going all the way around our circle and saying, 7 pi over 4. We have to go backwards. Okay. Tangent inverse again. So different way to write it, but same thing. Okay. So tangent inverse means I want to know where is y over x root 3. Okay. So when you think about y over x, you think about all your values that you can have. You just to explain it this way. You have zeros and ones as coordinates. You have root twos as coordinates. You have one half and a root 3 over 2. If you think about answers that you've gotten so far where you've simplified, you've gotten a root 3, and you've gotten a root 3 over 3 when you deal with these two, so 30s and 60s. So the question is, which combination is giving you this and which combination is giving you this? Okay, so is it 1 half over root 3 over 2, or is it root 3 over 2 over 1 half? Well, if it was this, I would multiply by the reciprocal. And that would be 1 over root 3 over 2 over 3. So where did this happen, and where did this happen? Well, this happened when this was y and this was x. Well, where is my y value 1 half and my x value root 3 over 2? My y value is 1 half and my x value is root 3 over 2 here. That's at pi over 6. 
where is over here? Where is my y root three over two? And where is my x one half? That would be here, which is at pi over three. Okay, so here's how I always remember this, and I'll talk through in the examples. I always remember that three over three goes with six because three plus three is six. I remember that pi over three goes with this because just three. Okay, or you can do this algebra every time, which is kind of annoying. Okay, so let's go back to this. If I want to do the tangent inverse um, at root three, then based off of what I just said. Since that's a 3, it would be associated with pi over 3. Okay. Um, it's in one of these two quadrants. So it's either up pi over 3 or down pi over 3. Because the answer is positive, that means I'm dividing a y and an x to get a positive. So it must be in the first quadrant. So this is my answer because I would go to here. Okay. Similarly, if I were to look at uh, arc tangent, so same idea, I want to know when is y over x giving me a negative root 3 over 3. Okay, well, first of all, here's my two quadrants I look at. If I'm dividing a y and an x and getting a negative, it must be in this quadrant. If it's a root 3 over 3, 3 plus 3 equals 6, so that means that it's pi over 6. So it's happening at 30 degrees. Okay. Because it's down here in the, the fourth quadrant, that means I have to go down to get to that pi over 6, so it would be negative pi over 6. Okay, so that's a little bit of a shortcut with tangent. All right, let's try sine. So arc sine is y. I want to know when is y this. I keep kind of drawing an arrow and saying, when is y this? Okay, well, first of all, Sine is y, so I'm dealing with these two quadrants because here y is positive and here y is negative. You always want to use two words, one of each. Okay, and these are the two you must use. When is y zero? Well, y is zero right here. And that actually we have to say that it's at zero radians. You cannot say two pi. Okay, because if you look back at the front, sine is defined as negative pi over two, which is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to pi over two. And zero is between these values. Two pi is not between this value to this value. All right. Um, arc tangent. Okay, so I want to know when is y over x giving me this. So here's my two quadrants. If I'm dividing a y and x and getting a positive, it must be in this quadrant. Three plus three equals six. So that would be at pi over six. Positive right there, because that answer is positive. So that would be my answer. Okay, so it's a much quicker way than to have to sit here and say, well, is it one half over root three over two, or is it the other way, and what angle is that associated with? Okay. Um, in the last couple, we're going to do some compound, where we do multiple. Okay, If you remember back in math, one, when you did like um, a rotation of the connection so you always did the inside and then once you did that you did the outside. It's the same idea. It's the same thing as like if you did f of g or two. The first thing you'd have to do is this and then take that the answer and substitute it in. Alright, so we're, that's what we're going to do. We always work inside out. So we have to do this first, and we're just going to ignore that other part. So if I do this, notice that I'm giving you an angle now. So it's going back to what we did before. So that means I want to know when is x. Or, um, I want to know x, and the pi over 3 means it's a reference angle of 60 degrees. Okay. So 60 degrees would be here. My x value there is 1 half. And pi over 3, I'd be right here, so it stays 1 half. Okay, so that's evaluated. Then I'm going to rewrite this, and I'm going to say sine inverse of one half. Okay. Well, sine means y, and I want to know when is my y one half. So I draw this. I want to deal with these two quadrants. Notice now I'm giving you a coordinate, so I want an angle. Up here I gave you an angle, so I wanted a coordinate. Okay. So when is my y one half? Well, my y's are positive in this quadrant, and that little height right there is one half. This would be one half, this would be root two over two, this would be root three over two, and this would be one. 
So what angle is that? That's a little small angle right there. So that would be a pi over 6. That would be my answer. Okay. So you really just want to make sure that you do these one step at a time. Otherwise, it, it looks like it's bad, but it's really just me saying find one answer and then use that to find the next. Okay. So let's do this one first, always inside out. Okay. Notice I'm giving you an angle, which means I want a coordinate. So tangent means y over x. This, notice it's got a pi in here, has a reference angle of 45 degrees. So 45 degrees would be here, which means it'd be root 2 over 2 divided by root 2 over 2. Okay. Um, 3 pi over 4 would be, let's see, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is here. Here my x is negative, so this would be negative. When I divide these, I get negative 1. Okay, so I evaluated that's what this gives me. I'm going to rewrite this next part. I'm going to say, okay, now I want to do the cosine inverse of that answer. So I want to do the cosine inverse of negative 1. Okay, so cosine means x. And I want to know, notice I'm giving you a coordinate, which means I want an angle. So you'll never give me what I ask for. So like if I give you a coordinate, don't tell me a coordinate as an answer. Um, so cosine is x. I want to know when is x this. I'm going to say x means that I'm dealing with these two quadrants. You're going to have to memorize which quadrants you're talking about. I want these because x is positive here, or negative here. So one of each. Um, x is negative in this quadrant, and x is negative 1 at this angle right here. That angle is pi. So that would be your answer. Okay. Um, in this one... So again, start with the inside, but in this one, notice I'm starting with the inverse. So I want to know when is y over x this. There is no reference angle, right, because there is no pi in here. There is no reference angle. So I want to know when is y over x this. Well, 3 plus 3 equals 6, so that happens at pi over 6. Okay, I'm going to draw this just to so understand. So these would be my two uh, quadrants that I use. If it's a positive root 3 over 3, it must happen in this quadrant, which means this stays pi over 6. It wouldn't go backwards and be negative pi over 6. Okay? Now that I have pi over 6, I'm going to rewrite this and say sine of pi over 6. That means I want to know my y value at 30 degrees. So if I draw this, 30 degrees is here. I want to know what that y value is. That y value is 1 half. Okay. Pi over 6, that is the angle, so I don't have to worry about moving it anywhere. That would be my answer. All right, so a couple suggestions. Um, when you don't go back and write down, like you got this answer, which leads you to this answer, or you got this answer, which leads you now to evaluate here, or you got this answer, which leads you to here, those are places that we typically make mistakes because we try to do too much in our head. So as soon as you find one answer, you want to rewrite what you're left with and say, okay, now I want the sine inverse of this. Or I got this, now I want cosine inverse of that answer. Or I got pi over 6, now I want to do sine pi over 6. Okay? It's sometimes hard to go back and forth between a coordinate and, a, and an angle and an angle and a coordinate. So now we have to decide which way we're going. So it really helps to make sure that you write it down. It gives you a better chance. Okay? Um, in your homework, which is worksheet number 11, um, I want to go through one or two with you. So you can uh, show the sub that your notes are done and that um, you can get the homework, and then you can go through this with me. So let me show you number six, which is tangent inverse of zero. So inverse means I want an angle. I want to know when is y over x this. Okay, maybe draw that arrow in to really show. I want to know when is y over x this. Okay. So if I draw this out, I know that y over x is, are these two quadrants. Okay, you have to memorize that. All right, I want to know when is y over x is zero. Okay, well the only way to get a zero is if something is a zero. Well, the only places that I get zeros would be here, here, or here. Right, those coordinates have zeros. These are undefined at tangent, so the only option is this. But in case you didn't know that, you could give yourself an example and you could say, well, it's either 0 over 1 or it's 1 over 0. But this is undefined. That's why this does not work. Which means then this has to be where it's happening. So 0 over 1 is happening right here. 
that's where my y value is 0 and my x is 1. That angle is at 0 radians. Okay? Don't say pi. Pi is over here. Don't say 2 pi. Okay? Notice right here. Uh, oh, not here. Um, it's going to be assumed. I should have written in here. It's always going to be assumed that this is going from 0 is less than or equal to um, x, which is less than or so this would be zero radians. Don't say two pi radians because then you have to go through the program to use the word right here. Okay. Um, just one more time with number nine because that's usually where we kind of get stuck. Tangent inverse means I want to know when is y over x this. So I think that's just a three, then it would be at pi over three. And it's not like this where I'd say three plus three is pi over six. Um, I do want to pay attention to the fact that that's negative. So since it's talking about these two quadrants, when I divide y and x, I get negatives in this quadrant. So that means that this would be a negative pi over 3 for my answer. Okay. Um, most of these are inverses. I think at some point I give you non-inverses. So like here, I'll go through one of these with you. Um, it looks like this one's going to so have to pay attention to when are you evaluating inverses um, to the inverse to evaluate. So here I want to start with the inside first. Notice that this is pi, so it's a reference angle. So I want to know my y value at 30 degrees. Okay. So 30 degrees is here. My y value is short. It's 1 half. 11 pi over 6 means I almost made it around to 12 pi over 6, but I'm 30 degrees short. Okay. That y value right there is negative. Okay. So now I'm done, but now I want to know when... What is the cosine inverse of negative one half? Okay, so I want to know when is x this? So cosine is the, are these two quadrants, positive x, negative x. So when is my x negative? It happens in this quadrant. Negative one half would be going a short distance of this, not negative root two or two, not negative root three or two, not negative one. Okay, so I think every time you do this. Can move left this much, this much, which is a little, a little bit more, a little bit more, and a little bit more. And I'm moving left because it's x. So that angle right there, this is 60 degrees from here to here. That's the reference. Okay. So that means that that's pi over 3. This is pi over 3. This is 2 pi over 3. That's probably one of the harder questions is getting that 2 pi over 3. Okay, good luck on your homework. Uh, we'll do day two on Monday.